health is green. I need to buy a Ferrari. Wait, do I need to publish? What do I do? Uh, you're just oh, you're just doing stream now. We're we're live. As soon as you it's stream now. As soon as it says stream health oh. up there, green, you're good. Well, then we're good. We're on the internet. We're right on now. the air. And this thing lies really bad down here. Go by the chat. Like, see how there's already somebody in chat, but it says like, oh, yeah. nobody's watching. It'll always say nobody's watching. Then it'll say like three people are watching. Try to break this like, out. Pop out chat. There yep. we go. Oh, and then I, then I just close this. Yeah, I'm not even wearing my Apple Watch, man. Should have put that thing on. Should have put that thing on. Should have. Okay, so here we go. And just so you guys know, Joel is as sexy in person. Now I am. No, you just ruined it. I didn't ruin it. I didn't ruin anything. They hadn't took off in thirty years. I'll get chairs. Chairs? All I'm right, here, chairs. I'm, just, I'm just gonna sit here and do the truffle shuffle. We get some chairs. There we go. I got your dog drool all over my belly. Be like truffle shuffle. <laughs> that dog drool makes that shirt worth more. I know it does. Oh my god. All right. How many in chat are already bitching because I'm not streaming my own live stream? <laughs> Ladies, what's up, Windroid guy? Man, the camera on the MacBook Pro is decent. This looks better than my Logitech nine, nine, uh, C920. Kitchen chairs, Jerry. Kitchen chairs. Dude, the camera on this thing is phenomenally good. Know, it's a Mac. It's a Mac. <laughs> well, it's okay. Microsoft laid me off, so now now I'm all for Mac. Yeah, I'm screw like, those guys. Oh, yeah, screw those guys. I'm pro Mac hardcore. Are these are these rated to 300? All right. These Apparently. are rated. Perfect. Apparently so. All right. Look at that. Let's see what wow. we got going on in chat over here. Oh yeah, I should probably like tweet out the stream. I should tweet. So I'm gonna tweet out the stream. Okay, I'm gonna tweet out the stream, you guys. Yeah, we're gonna do some tweeting I'm gonna, here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tweet it out. Tweeting is gonna happen. So gonna tweet this out. What do I? Where is the stream? Oh, you have to click on. Let's see. Where's a watch on page? Where is it? Oh, I'll play ad. No. Wait, there's a play ad button here. Play an ad. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see that before. You can That's play interesting. an ad. Okay, I guess so. Okay, so now now right. it's orange, which means I think we're off the air while they're streaming. There's 23. Oh, there it is. Right. Uh, no, that's the server. Uh, stream options. One station cards. Oh, right here. Oh, nope. That's no, the stream. No, 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 no. Oh, wait, right here. Right here. There it is. There it is. You tweet that out, and then okay. I will retweet that out. Okay. My wife, I am hungry for dinner. When will you be home? Probably a few hours. Go ahead and eat. <laughs> Let's see. Me. Did we, oh, we're still, I like how I literally like just left. We're still playing like, when are you coming home? All right, I'm going to go retweet the tweet of the tweet. Let's see here. Um, All right. All right. Well, how do I? This is how the whole live stream is going to go to you guys. Just so you, just so you know. Well, I it's not expectations. <laughs> hey, you got to go start. Uh, you got to go start collecting three D prints to talk about, right? No, we're going to talk how? about three D prints. I thought, the, I thought sure. we were just going to talk about just fun stuff. We could talk about fun. Well, we could talk about everything, right? We could. We yeah. could. Three D printing is fun, Jerry. Apparently, for you, because you're you're doing it a lot more than I am, which is about to change. Because Joel here apparently oh, is the number one 3D printing Same. channel on YouTube, and that is not fair at all. Because I have more subscribers than him, and that's all that matters, right? Why is it orange? I don't know. Why are you not coming up in Twitter? Why am I not coming up in You're the Twitter? You didn't tag me, did you? I did. Uh. Uh. No. You horrible, horrible, horrible man! You. I just look for. Just look for. Um. Hold on, I'm scrolling. Uh, I gotta scroll a lot. Oh, there it is. Wait, nope, that's failed design. Oh, you gotta. You want me to tag you? Yeah, tag me. Okay. <laughs> I do not possess the technical skill to find the tweet. The tweet eludes me. Oh, hold on, I found the home page. Let's see if I can find you now. All right. There you go. Where you at, Joe? There we go. Where you at? Okay, did you tweet again? I tweet. No, I, I tweeted you. Here we go. I tweeted you. Oh, you did? Yeah, I tweeted you. Why is it not showing up? Is uh, LTE failing me here? Let's see. Um, Got Adam's tweet. Oh, I'm not getting your tweet. I don't know. Kill it. I done broke the Twitters. Kill the Twitters and then bring the Twitters back. Hold on, guys. We gotta get more people in here before we start talking about all the important cool we stuff. We got a lot of people. We've got seven. There's seven whole people in here. We um, probably scared off the other twenty, like when we ran the ad. Uh, hi Shannon. I saw that. Prints more. So step. Oh, oh, you just got called out. You got called out because they say I print more than you. <laughs> I'm so sorry you had to see that. 
Yeah, Joel's got a pretty good sweatshop going on I here. I do. He really so does. Many, so many small children producing so many small prints. You, you know, you know. it's funny when somebody from the chat actually retweets your tweet to me to get my attention. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Who was that? Win- Joe. Yeah, Windroid Thanks. guy. Yeah. Thank, thank you for, uh, Thanks, Joe. for helping me out there. Let's see. Uh, let's see. We are live on this link. Your mystery. Th- oh, because it used the last thumbnail from your last video. Oh, I got to change that. I got to change that. Oh, no. Oh, no. I got to change the, the thumbnail. The ship is going down. Oh, God. All right, let's see. You guys are killing me. I'm going to be like, come watch me live. Okay. Uh, I'm, with, I'm keeping that thumbnail. Joel, and then I'm going to put total fail boat. It says, it says 54 people, apparently. Not okay. fail boast, fail boat, Siri. Boat. A boat. Fail boat. Fail, fail boat. There we go. I've done okay. it. Okay. So now okay. we should have like 9 million live viewers here. <laughs> 9 million. 9 million. It's half robots. Oh, by the way, did you see my picture? What did you think of that? Is that pretty good? That's fantastic. You did that all by yourself. I did. I sure That's did. amazing. I, I thought so. I, I actually can't comprehend such such artistic magnitude. You know what makes me sad, though, is when a stick figure drawing in Photoshop gets more retweets than like something else I post. <laughs> People, people like MS Paint. The internet, dude. It's the internet. It's, it's the full, internet. Of, full of cats and crappy drawings. It's the internet. So, guys, looks like uh, it says we have 58 people, but I guarantee you that we have more than that. In Excel? I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. Go over uh, go over and click on see OBS. Do you have OBS right I do have right? OBS. Okay, OBS should tell us how many people are in here. Really? So, down here at the bottom, where is it? Um, it doesn't say. Oh, no, it doesn't. I guess only XSplit does. Mm. Darn. Mm. Well, I guarantee you we have more than that in here. So, it's, it's a big liar. What, vodka Red Bull time? I wish. I have gout in my foot, so now I can't drink anymore. I can't have Red Bull anymore. I don't have gout, so I can drink. <sighs> you should, actually. I should. And you don't have to Ooh. drive, so you should, no. you should just I might go, go make a, I might go make a Moscow Mule. Do it. Am I? Do it. Or no. And then and then oh. bring me a Red Bull and don't tell anybody I drank it. We're out of Red Bull. Damn you. I know. You're a horrible person. Why am I whispering? I'll kill you. <sighs> um, so, oh, 76 now. Hey, 76. so would, would okay. you guys like to see something? God damn, you're tall. You are a tall bitch. I'm, uh, I am. a huge bitch. I am. <laughs> uh, so would you guys like to see some 3D prints? Because uh, Joel, unlike me, actually still uses his 3D printer. I use all of them. All of them. All, all the time. 24 of them, and they print all sorts of things. They're literally littered throughout his house. Like, I, I can Jerry. see a 3D printer here. There's yeah. like 3D printers in the laundry room. There's 3D printers in the 3D printer room. There is a lot that Joel is holding back from his channel. I just print a bunch of stuff, and Jerry came by, and he said, whoa, look at all this stuff. He does. He I does. have a lot of stuff. And just so you guys know, he is a total sellout. I'm not going to give you any more details than that, but just when you tell somebody that they're a sellout on the internet, they're just going to attack you. And oh. I feel that you need to be initiated before you get bigger. I am a total sellout. So you are total, total sellout, total rage and sellout, total sellout. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to look at some 3D prints here. I'm going to go into your mystical magical uh, room here, and I'm going to grab. Watch well, you here. Let's just kick it off with the with the elephant in the room. Literally. Can I answer a question? I can certainly try to answer a question. Let's see. Scale one to ten. How weird is Jerry? Batman symbol. Uh, twing. Look at that. That's a Buddha. It's like all blown out because it's like so white. It's so white. Look at that. The resemblance, guys. The resemblance. Oh, hi, Jerry. How are you? That's pretty good, man. Yeah, that's good. Oh. Good. Oh, good. What's going on? See, I'm not really this fat in real life. Close, but not. Okay, anyway. Look how smooth. Look how smooth the belly is. No, it actually did, did a pretty good job. That's G-Max, baby. I'm getting one of those next month. Yeah. Hashtag sellout. It'll be, good. It'll be good to have you on the G-Max train. I know. I want a printer that can print ridiculously huge things. It's It can. It can predict, print ridiculously huge things. And and it'll be neat to have someone within a close distance to me of having one yeah. where I can be like, hey, Jerry, can you try printing this? Or you can be like, hey, Joel, can you print this? And I can be like, yes, of course I can print that. Yeah. I'm gonna have, we both are going to have a pretty diverse collection of 3D printers. Between the two of us, I think, yes, I think... Because I have I have the Ultimakers. By the time I'm done with that, I'll have like five of them or maybe even six of them. But they I multiply also, like rabbits. Yeah, man. but I have the CreatorBot 3D. I have the Pegasus 3D SLA printer. Haha, <laughs> you don't have an SLA printer. I don't have an yet. SLA. If anybody wants to give me an SLA printer, please do. I need to review that thing really quick before Forms Labs discovers you. Because Forms Lab wanted to send me one, but I told them I was already reviewing their competitors' Pegasus. For, Forms so. Labs. So Form, Form Labs, if you're listening or if somebody watching the stream would like to go tweet Form Labs and say to give Joel a printer. That would be kind of funny because he would be reviewing the competitor of the printer that I'm reviewing. Oh, that'd be that'd that, be funny. That would be kind of funny. That would and be interesting. funny. That would be funny. Hey, I'm all for competition, man. Competition yeah. breeds excellence. Well, someone else is going to print this bigger than what I printed it and try to get your attention with it. You know that. I know. Right? You know what you could do is you could actually quarter this it really easily and print it on the GMAXs each quarter the full size. Of oh, the easily. Platform, and this oh. thing would be like life size. I mean, pretty much it would be. Can you imagine that as a lawn ornament? Actually, you know what? When I paint this gold, I might stick it outside. 
I mean, I'd probably want to find awesome. some way to secure it to the ground because I like live in like the crack neighborhood and everybody would, like run off with it. But yeah, you don't want cool people stealing like, your barnacles. No, print two of these and like put them out on the on the sides of my door. <laughs> Instead of having the what is and it, put a candle a candle behind it so sure. it flickers like an LED candle so it flickers at night and everybody be like what the hell is wrong good. with that guy that would be good I actually got a new neighbor the other day they just bought the house across from me and uh, and I walked out in my pajama pants on my t shirt and I said I hope you guys aren't offended but this is literally what I wear when I come outside and, and the lady looked at me and she's like well I hope you don't get offended I walk outside too like wearing nothing so I was like <laughs> okay well th- that's fine that's cool it was kind of awkward because she like one upped me kind of yeah uh, but yeah, how often I, does that happen not really no that often. I kind of no, figured. She, she was she was a special a... kind of weird, and then I told her I was a YouTuber, and she's like, I could have guessed, <laughs> and I was like, was that an insult? Like, <laughs> it, it was it was kind of insulting a little bit. Oh, that's fantastic! Oh my gosh, how many people are in here now? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's go to your little live stream with ninety six are watching now with a message rate of twenty four. Quick, run another ad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought that that was kind of funny. Why are we getting a stream quality of orange? Does the stream look okay, guys? I don't know. Let's the find stream out. health says, is orange. Uh, the current resolution is 1920 1200, which is not optimal. Oh, because it's having to scale it to 1920 by 1080. Oh, oh MacBook Pro problem. Well, well I, I don't know if it looks okay. Then uh, nobody's complaining about it. They trust me. They think. would. The internet is very fickle. If there was a problem, well, at I don't know. All, Look at this. Complaining. Hey, Joel, your audio is out of sync. That's pretty typical because you have a USB mic plugged in. It's I do. And your and your camera's probably delayed by like half a second. Sorry guys, in sync audio is for poor people. You don't you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I still you know the well, funny know, thing is I refuse to stop using that saying and I get attacked every single time I use it. Do you really? Because everybody yeah. thinks I'm being completely literal. Dude, I, when I say I, poor people, I'm actually saying rich people. Like if you if you look at the context that I'm using it, it's funny. It always works out to be rich no, people. No, I know. People I know. don't get it though. I know. They don't get it, man. I'm sorry. They don't get it. I say poor people and they immediately start jumping all over my jock. Jeez. Look at that. People want a Joel Buddha. I'll scan my head and I'll print myself a Joel Buddha. You totally Buddha. should. Um, uh, you I know what? I can remember the guys that did this original head. It was at World Maker Fair last year. Oh. They came and took a bunch of pictures of me and they didn't tell me why. They're just like, hey, can we photograph from the side and the front and everything? And I was like, I know this is going to end up on the tip of a dildo somewhere, but I did it anyways. And they sent it to me like a week later after I got home. Oh, really? was, yeah, because they took the pictures and they created what they called a scatter map. Right. And then the scatter map, they showed me it. It was really bad. And then they had a guy go in there and actually look at a picture of me and clean it all up. So they started with the scatter. Well, and they gave you some pretty cool and, hair. Yeah, too. and the hair obviously isn't isn't a scanned replica of my hair. But they, I thought it turned out awesome. They even got the double chin just right. It was pretty awesome. I thought the double chin when I was doing the time lapse of the print. Yeah. I thought it was awesome how it kind of just formed out of midair. Just was it was it just majestic? It was majestic. I know the belly button even kind of looks kind of right on too, although you don't got the scar from where my appendix came out. And I got huge nipples. God, can you guys see the size of the nipples on this guy? I was like, <laughs> whoa, that is that is some big nibbins right there. Well, they're they're 3D models. You rub them so for luck. I, I rub the belly. You, you can rub it. whatever you want. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, he's anatomically correct too. Damn it. <laughs> see, Joel, I don't have to drink. You might no, have to drink to get I, on my oh. level. Oh my gosh! So this is the Buddha. There's the Buddha. Thank, thank you, Joel, for printing me this mat. And this thing's massive. Look at this. It's huge. It is. I've never 3D printed anything that was this large as a single piece. Right. Now, now I did print done. the entire Stormtrooper suit, which was 20 rolls of filament and weighs like 30 some pounds. Really? Oh yeah, I printed the chest plate at uh, almost 100% infill <laughs> because it had to be able to handle me bending. In the, oh yeah. I tried printing it uh, thinner and I was breaking the pieces. Really? So I finally just said, screw it. And I printed it. So like each one of those pieces that's in the chest plate, there's six of them on the front. Each one of those almost consumes an entire roll of filament just to print the one because it's like this thick, solid, oh, and like geez. this tall. No, that suit is crazy, dude. Like, I, I bought a mannequin to hang it on, and yeah. it's about bending the pole on the mannequin. Like, the mannequin was never designed to hold that much armor. You need a stormtrooper mannequin. Yeah, but it's but it's mannequin. epic. I would love to fix that up and wear it to like Emerald City Comic Con. But I need uh, I have to bring somebody with me because I can't get into it by myself. It actually oh, really? requires somebody hanging it in and dropping it over my hands. You can't because it's so rigid, it's so heavy wow. and so thick. It has to be dropped onto me, and then all the the chest plates and everything. I can't reach them with all the armor on so i have to actually have somebody finish putting my arm pieces on after i put the leg pieces. oh because you can't you can't because i literally cannot reach Jeez. them yeah totally worth it because once you get the armor on one arm that arm can only move about this far so you can't even get over to like oh, you can't like scratch an itch over here yeah, yeah like You're literally like, when i'm holding the blaster and i'm walking around like this i mean that's like it i'm i'm pushing the limits <laughs> it's not you would not want to go to battle in this suit no i would rather not. fight naked than wear that thing well you gotta wonder because the the, the stormtrooper is in episode seven and even the previous Star Wars, right? They had, yes. They had mobility. They did. They, I, we actually saw them run, and it was obvious the footage was not sped up. So, hmm. that's crazy. Hmm. So you guys want to see another three D print? 
I got more. I got a lot more. I I love how white that filament is. Look at that. It's it is brilliantly white. Jeez, you can't you can't even like I'm looking at the camera. Hold on, 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 I gotta give him the the shadow. There we go. There we go. See now 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 you can see the majesty. That is this because Joel, Joel got all professional with the lighting. We actually have like two soft boxes. Oh yeah, out in front of us, we got like a solid wall behind us. Jo- Joel, solid. Joel does not have a diploma from the school of how Jerry does crappy video. Because I literally like never do any setup. I'm like I got my bachelor, my, my bachelor degree in oh, how you got your bachelor. Yeah, I got my bachelor. Oh. I got my bachelor degree in how does Joel do crappy video? Dude, you're even wearing a NASA Space Center shirt. Well, no, but oh, gotcha. It's okay, portal. gotcha. Right. Gladys. Space. Gladys is like spruce. All right, we're gonna look at another 3D print. All right, here we're just gonna leave this right here. Sure. This can be. Well, here I'm gonna show the the back though. Yeah, okay. here, show it off. Right. There. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like yeah. the back back. Oh, look at that. The letters are nearly the letters are nearly 90 degrees from the back, and they they turned out fantastic. That's impressive. That's impressive. No, 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 Batman, Batman. Batman. That's Whoa. actually this is actually a test print for a Bat Girl. Costume. Ooh. Well, one thing I will tell you is these are the easiest things in the world to 3D print. And I'll tell you why. Because notice it is just a flat piece and it's extruded upward. And it's straight up. Yep. So when you first get your 3D printer, the first print you're most likely going to play around with, unless you want to tear your hair out and like you know beat your dog and take it out on. Don't do that, by the way. Don't do that. Um, dogs. Dogs are good. Uh, but this thing right here is just layer on top of layer on top of layer. So you can make it as thick as you want. You don't have to worry about any kind of overhangs. You don't have to worry about gravity getting in the way. It's surprising. A lot of people don't realize what how complicated these little 3D printers are to get them oh, to work correctly. That's why I'm blown away by how good your prints are. It's obvious that you've printed a lot of things and made a lot of mistakes. To oh get yeah, to where you're at. I've I've a garbage bag full of failed prints oh, yeah. and you know taken to the the dump and recycle. Like this is easy. That's easy. Getting a printer dialed into where it prints something like this is a little bit harder, and you probably can't see because of the detailed thing. But there are some. Uh, little places in it where you can see through where the layers, you know, did separate a little bit. But all in all, I mean, you could fill that in no problem. No, no, the G, this this would be so easy to finish. Yeah, this would be easy. you could wet sand this like completely glossy oh. if you wanted to. Oh, I bet. No, Wait, P- can you, PLA can you... sands really well. I I knew it sanded, but you could sands glossy with wet. Yeah, if you use. Did you ever see my pokeball I printed? Was that wet sanded? Yeah. Oh. And, and if you watch the video before I even paint it, yeah, it's completely like a mirror gloss. And that was just using 1,500 and 2,000 grit sandpaper, and I wet sanded the thing down. No, That's wet- so cool. See, I knew something Joel didn't know. That's so cool. Whoa, I learned something today. That made me feel powerful. <laughs> how, how many people are in here now? we got we got to get more people know. in here. Let's find out. Let's find out. We are at... Dun, 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 119. 119. So, guys, I want to get that up to 4,000. So, <laughs> so, could everybody please go to Twitter and retweet out the stream and say, t- stream, I'm not even speaking English You're anymore. I think drunk. I got hit in the head. Um, go retweet out the stream and tell everybody that, uh, I don't know, there's, there's, there's cleavage. Just put cleavage, hashtag cleavage, hashtag sure. live, and then put the stream. Of and course. Th- that'll get people in here. The internet's kind of weird like that. Or if we want a bunch of the French Canadian dudes, just say there's a fat guy in here with a shirt off. I'm not even joking. I get so many emails. What is it, man? The French Canadians think I am just the sexiest thing alive. I don't know what the deal is. Every single time I get an email, it's like, oh man, you're really cute. And I'm like, oh, hey, where are you at? Oh, I'm in Quebec or something. I'm like, Quebec? <laughs> I'm like, you're okay. Que- que- Quebec what? Hey, I'm not complaining, man. Hey, you know, I'll, t- I'll take the praise where I can get it. Sure, why not? All right, so we got bat. So we got. Batarang. Batarang. Batarangatang right here. Batarang. Right. Bang a ring, right, Peter. Let's go find something else. We'll just fill this entire table up. Until Why not? Can see us anymore. Uh, that won't be too hard. Back to the room. Let's oh, see. Yeah. I'm your only Twitter friend? No, oh, come on. You've got more friends. You've got more friends. 3D printers are exploding everywhere. I not mine. Two. Mine do not explode. No, his do not explode. You guys, you get a load of this. this oh. I love that thing. You know what? They should make one where the parts detach so you can turn them, turn them around and morph oh, and do the, it. Yeah. So that you can have it be the two legs straight together, or in the configuration where it just flies. What is it? I like? thought I go out to the side or. I, uh... No, it's just just like that. Because these, about... these twists, I remember, they come together in the center. Right. They, they just, yep, just they, like that. They come yep. center. But then there was another mode that was like more like it was like a spaceship, wasn't there? Or did they no, always have that's the legs? The only one. Oh, man, I need to go watch my Tron again. You need to watch Tron again. But look at this. This thing is gorgeous. That's and the you recognizer. Printed, and you print that on the G-Max too, right? This was printed on the G-Max 1.5 XT Plus using Colorfab Transparent Red PLA. 
and it's a 0.2 millimeter layer height and the layers are clean it is 200 microns for the layers it was printed at 70 millimeters a second it's two perimeters three bottom layers four top layers printed at 208 degrees for the first layer 203 203 degrees every layer afterwards wait you actually change the temperature between your layers yeah and the fan speed too well, I do change the fan speed. I don't change the <laughs> <temperature>. <laughs> but, oh, Look but, at you. Pin a rose on your nose. I, it's just I, uh, I, I found it works better. I think it's beautiful. It really came out well. No, I, I, I dig this. This would be a piece that I would actually display. And the nice thing about it is, even though that printer is gigantic, there's only one slight layer deviation in the entire thing. When you can tell, it's when it actually started doing the, the upper. Yep. The, the extrusion. But even out. so, that's like, that's, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. I mean, I, if nothing. I print something this thick, I mean, there'll be three or four or five, <laughs> and that's a good one. That's like a fantastic one. So yeah. go G-Max. You My enjoyment will not will not be decreased because of that slight layering. Put on like a Does that work? work? Oh, well, no, I wish. That'd be awesome. Oh, oh, here we go. There we go. We got it. All right. Let's go grab another one. I'm going to grab another one. Then you got, uh, let's see. Well, actually, Star Wars is kind of huge right now. Star Wars is huge. Oh, yeah, it's an Imperial shuttle. Well, no, go get the... Oh, you want the big one? Yeah, go, go get the big okay, one. Take okay, take the big one. I'll be okay. back. I'll be back. So this is the standard-sized Imperial shuttle printed in ColorFab PLA at 100% scale. The wings do fold up, and it printed just like this on the dun, bed. Dun, 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 there we go. This one. This thing's huge. So there, hold on. Yeah, there. there we go. Yeah. It's... Yeah, that went. Look at that. How cool is that? That's not what it sounds like. That's, that's not what it sounds like. I don't think that's what it sounds like. Uh, I think it's cool, man. How did the... How are those? Did you print this with these inside? Oh yeah, it's one piece. <laughs> Your yeah. printer is magical. Yeah, that's are you a wizard? No, it's printed on Printed with the wings folded up. Oh, gotcha. And then you just had to break apart. Oh, actually, didn't you have to break them apart because there's enough. Oh no, we're tolerance. getting static. Oh, are we? Audio is full of static. No, is everybody saying static or? There's a lot of people saying static. Audio is going frizz. I have an uh -oh. idea. Could we? Can we change settings on the fly? Uh, n well, audio you probably can. Video you won't be able to. What if I do that? Do, do, do we break the Yeti? Let's see if that helps. Well, what if I do... The audio levels are way lower now, but let's see. Let's see if we do that. All right, remember, you have to wait about 30 seconds. Right. Um, okay. Before uh, we see the feedback. Microphone is removed. Internal mic is being used. If only that's how they flew in Star Wars. Drunk pilot. All right. Which begs the question, in space, what benefit do you get from doing this? You get absolutely no benefit from doing that in space. Because the craft is the same exact mass. Like, what the hell um, benefit would you get from doing I, this? I don't know. I don't know exactly what benefit you would get from that. But it looks cool. It just looks more badass. It looks cool. The engineer was like, it doesn't matter. It looks more badass. It does. <laughs> Frank, you shit your, your mouth. That thing's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Frank. So the engineer. The engineer's name Frank. Name Frank. Okay. They're, they're all Frank and Doug. And sure. Well, oh, of course. No, that thing's awesome. That thing's cool. I love that thing. All right. Well, we need to get another thing. So oh, that's pretty big. Put that one back while we get something else. We got oh, room. Okay. okay. Now you're flying in the right configuration. I am. Well I done. Take off. Okay. People say it's better with the mic. Hot dang. Is it? Yeah. What? What, Joel? What? <laughs> Joel, sorry, guys. Joel's oh, only known man. me for about 45 minutes. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, uh... Well, every... I took pictures of that. So, this is the... This is the you the know Falcon what you're 9. doing, Joel. No, no. This is, you so know this what is, you're doing. This is the Falcon 9 rocket from <laughs> SpaceX, right? This is the one that successfully landed. Someone modeled it, but... I Wait, took a picture did you of say it. successfully? Successfully landed. I, this, thought the, I thought the Falcon 9 went, like successfully oh kickstands failed oh uh, at the barge at sea this yeah. is the one that landed on land successfully oh they got one to land successfully the, the very, very, the now very I feel first bad one. for making all the memes oops the very first one was, Sorry, was this one and it, it did successfully land the oh. very first one and i took a picture i was like look at this thing i printed and everybody's like it's a penis it's a penis it's a penis it's, it's pretty much a penis i mean well, my penis doesn't have thrusters but you know it's a basic shape I'm pretty sure this is what Elon was thinking about when he designed the damn thing, too. Maybe. He's like, put a bulbous tip on it. And they're like, all right, whatever. That's fine. He's got, he's paying for it, so. 
Yeah, but it's so, cool. Yeah, no, it actually printed really well. This print is one piece. One right? piece. See, one I piece. could I couldn't do that on any of my printers because this is, is this the 18, eight, 17, 18 inches tall. That is eighteen inches tall. So that is literally the absolute tallest that the G Max can do. Right? G Max will do twenty one. Wait, the G Max can do a twenty one inch tall print? Yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah. All right, we we'll know what the next one's being printed. At. I don't know. I feel weird holding this. I really do. Hey, should go I go grab, put it back, Joel? Go, should, go, I, should I go put this back? Go grab one. So, of the, okay, I'm putting it back. I'm putting it go back. Go grab one of the Destiny. Oh wait, go grab the Destiny gun right there. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I gotta put your. I gotta, I gotta put your adult toy back. All right. Wait a second. You didn't 3D print that, did you? What? The Millennium Falcon. No, not that one. Yeah, because I was gonna say, what printer are you using for that? No, one? No, 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 not that one. There's a there's a red Amanomalock muck. Anomalock. Oh, there it is. The, it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I printed the Duke, and you printed the cooler one. All right. There we go. That <laughs> Give works. me all your money! Give it to me now! Is it as accurate as the Duke? Because I could seriously just sit here and shoot you and never hit you. <laughs> the Duke Mark 44 is such a pile of garbage. Is it? I never... Well, they, they claim they fixed it, like, in a patch, but back when I played Destiny at first, you'd literally just walk up to stuff and be like, pow, 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 pow! I mean, yeah, it was horrible. Miss. It was horrible. I like, uh, I like this one, because when, when Kirby designed it, there's... there's space for two metal rods to run through it so that's why it actually has you know you're weight. kind of stealing my stick though printing kirby stuff like Dude. like i thought i was the the only other person other than kirby printing his stuff no man me feel sad. kirby and i are like this <laughs> like this like this kirby's good people <sighs> kirby's actually helping out uh him and one other guy are helping out with printing the urn for hannah my cat that passed away really? that, I, that i had to have put down so they're 3d printing yeah they, for they did a sketch for me and everything of her in a sitting position and they're with uh where it breaks apart so you can put the ashes yeah. inside and everything. yeah that video is coming i probably ruined is it weird surprise, is it weird doing a video on that it is no i'm gonna ball like a baby through the whole thing okay but it's uh, yeah. i've kind of already put myself out there joel if you haven't noticed sorry sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry i'm getting a new cat next week it'll be fine it's fine. Just, just get the new cat. Cats aren't replaceable. Right I probably away. won't even finish the urn project. Once I get the new kitty, I'll be like, oh, you're so cute. You're going to finish the urn. You're going to put the new kitty in the urn. This, is, this is how I deal with my emotions. Is I just bottle them up and insult them. That's what I do. That makes sense. <laughs> so that that's actually pretty cool. But I noticed that Kirby on that one didn't uh, make the, the this removable. The first one. This is the first one. Okay. And, and the later, once it came out. In the game, and sure. he was able to see it work. Then he oh, this is it. a pre-game. That's he did that from like a trailer or something. Yeah, oh, this was this wow. was pre-game. Yeah, because Kirby is really well known for functional models. Yeah, right. Like if you saw my Duke Mark Forty Four, the, the the drum actually drops it, out. It actually has munition that goes it, into yep. it, and it clips into place with a pressure spring-loaded release. Oh, really? Yeah, it literally pops into the frame, and to get the release, you have to bend a piece of plastic down. Like he made a little hinge trigger, oh, and that's it pops awesome. out. No, and uh, if you haven't seen it, he also took an airsoft gun. Did you see where he took I, made the giant yeah. sniper rifle? Yep. And he actually tells you, like, which airsoft gun. You basically go buy the airsoft gun, stuff it into his 3D model, fit it together, and you actually have changeable magazines. That's actually a thing. That's a that's yeah. a subculture, like 3D printed uh, airsoft add-ons. No, I'm totally going to get into that. Because I used to be big into airsoft. I was really? a member of a team uh, called Phantom Force for about eight years. Phantom Force? Yeah, from Paulsville, Washington. We used to, like, go to Oregon and stuff and play. Oh, Phantom God. Force. Yeah, I'm glad all those videos got taken out. Yeah, Phantom Force. Phantom Force. Yeah, because we were like Phantom. Dude, I moved through the woods like a phantom. I didn't even break a twig. <laughs> Didn't make a noise. Like ninja. Yeah. <laughs> the whole team would run away and they'd be like, Jerry, whatever you do, just sit Indian style here at the starting point. And don't just make sit right noise. here and don't move, Jerry. Stop breathing don't. heavy. <laughs> Stop breathing so loud, Jerry. <laughs> I was there to draw sniper fire. That was it. Uh, let's see here. Nathan Green says Robo 3D or Ultimaker 2. Ultimaker 2, hands down, if you can afford it. Robo 3D, if if you're poor and you just need something and you don't mind tinkering with it endlessly to get it. If that's, the, if that's the only two choices, I would probably agree with you. Yep. Then. Although you did show me what printed on the Dremel, I was pretty impressed with that. Yeah, the Dremel. Look at that. Someone said, "Is is the Dremel a good first printer?" Yeah. That's a Brian Kale. So I have personal experience with the Dremel 3D Idea Builder, and yeah. it, it works. I saw a print fantastic. from it. The print, the print looks pretty amazing. It, but also I wouldn't believe that because Joel seems like he knows how to tinker with any 3D printer to make it print really. Don't good. listen to that. Jerry. I'm starting it's, to it think was, that it's more. I just hit Joel. a button and it it just it just went. No, they. The Dremel is an easy printer to get working, and it's an easy printer to use. It's sur yep. it's surprisingly yep. easy. In fact, I've almost got Jerry convinced to get one. I might actually give one give one a try because I, did, I didn't realize that the print quality on it was that good. Yeah. And the other thing is, a lot of people have been asking about Flash Forges, and I've been telling because my friend has one, and now I've seen the one the stuff that you printed off of it. Yeah, that printer right there. Yeah, the Flash Forge is for the price is a great printer. You can Amazon usually has it on yep. sale for nine ninety nine. Oh God, under a thousand bucks you can't beat. Yeah, that. it's a uh, heated bed, dual extruder, and you said and you were printing at seventy millimeter a second on it, right? Uh, Dremel, I stick at sixty. Okay, but what about on the Flash Forge? 
I'm sorry, on the on the Flash oh, Forge. Oh, you're doing 60. 60. Okay, because yep. I remember that's the Achilles heel of it. it is it is kind of slow. Yeah. But it, but that's because of all the weight being on the hot end. It's just. It, but the thing is, the thing just prints beautifully. Absolutely prints beautifully. I love it. What do we got here? Dremel is a copycat of the Flash Forge Dreamer. Actually, yes, Dremel white labeled the Flash Forge Dreamer design and then put U.S. support behind it. So. And they took out that one of the you know what I'm gonna clear and... something up here with the whole copycat thing. Everybody copied everybody in the 3D printer world. I copied Jerry. Even the maker bot cupcake was a copy of a of an open source was rep wrap printer oh, that was created. Man. Why do you think everybody was so mad That's at it? Bree was like, "Oh, I'm gonna take all the open source oh. stuff and make it into a printer and sell it." And then the dick like licensed it. Shannon said, "If we were a potato chip, what flavor would we be?" I have to. I'm I'm confused. So if we were a potato chip, what flavor yeah, would we be? Yeah, what flavor of potato chips would we be? Uh, jalapeno. That's a good choice. Yeah, I would be. I would be. Because we're um, spicy. Ah, uh, spicy. 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 So spicy. I yeah, would nice. um. Uh, sour cream and onion. Sour cream and onion. Or is it sour cream and chive. One of the two. I like that. Yeah. Barbecue. I like barbecue anyway. chips. MakerBot for schools. MakerBot is not good for schools because it's. MakerBot is not good for anybody. It's not. It's not. It's not. Do not, not do not support a company that was run by an asshole and then bought by an even bigger asshole. <laughs> because they're owned by 3D Systems now, you know that, right? Like the guys that basically sued the shit out of like everybody in the industry, yeah. you know, open source guys. Yeah. They're like, we own everything. We well, designed everything. They were, they were no, acquired they're acquired by 3D Systems. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so the so so the quick quick and dirty story of MakerBot, they worked with the community to release the cup MakerBot cupcake which was a piece of crap frankly yeah. but it was like in the early generation before there was a good 3D printer so okay. let's just say that was good it was good then they went and licensed everything behind the community's back and turned everything that was open source into their license and then started open uh, attacking the open source community uh, while same. they were selling open source designs then they improved on it but again stole open source designs right Claim they tweaked them, claim they modified them, but there's tons of people that have done research and even looked at the source code and said, oh, there's tons that have been copied out. Um, and then after that, 3D Systems basically buys them, pushes Brie Larson out the door, and then 3D Systems goes and sues every other printer maker on the planet for closing in. Like that right there? Yeah. The only reason they're not getting sued is because they're like not in the United States. Really? Yeah. If, they, if that was... Oh, if that's that, true. All the MakerBot clones that, are That's all right. If that was Chinese, in the United right? States, they, if the Flash Forge creator was in the United States, they would be sued by 3D Systems right now because they put a plexiglass door on the front of the damn thing. They literally own the patent for that. Oh, for closing man. in a box, 3D Systems owns that for that's some reason. terrible. So, guys, I will go on record right now. I am not going to work with MakerBot unless they give me like $100,000. If they give me $100,000, then I will just lie to you all and use nothing but MakerBots. Wow. Yeah. I'm an, I'm honest with my audience. If, I'm really, really. If honest. MakerBot said they wanted to give me a printer, I'd give it a, a fair try because I haven't played with one. No, I, honestly, I think you should. I, okay. I, I don't know, and, and I and I'd be the same way. Honestly, I would give it a try, but I would be going in pretty jaded. Yeah, well, so they would yeah. have it would have to be a pretty miraculous printer for me to give it a pass. Cause That's true. MakerBot has just really, really pissed me off. But I have heard. It pains me to say, but I have heard that some of the new MakerBots, the, the, their new, their complete new design. Oh, the new smart extruder. Yes, has been has been decent, and not really? the first extruder. The first extruder that came out on them, if you remember, no, no, they, no, that was they, terrible. They, they all burned up, right. like, and everybody was like, and they knew, they knew they were going to burn up, and they still shipped them to customers. So again, shitty that's, ass company. That's bad. And to be honest, I actually. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not like hoity-toity. Like I won't work with a company if they're if they're like not completely honest. I mean, look, we're on a MacBook right now. I have an iPhone in my pocket, and I think Apple's like the devil. But I still use. <laughs> I still use what's the best. But what I'm saying is, the MakerBot is not the best. It is ridiculously expensive, and they also bitch if you use material that isn't theirs, which they charge like really? a 200 percent premium. Uh, for. But you know, a lot of people do that, right? They'll say it voids the warranty. Dremel says yeah. it voids the warranty. Yeah, voids Zor the warranty. If you Zortrax push says the same it voids exact the warranty. Plastic. Oh, it's just horrible. Man, I'm feeling very opinionated you, tonight, Joel. You have opinions, Jerry. I think it's because I'm on your stream. I feel like it's just, you know, it's mostly your audience. It is mostly my audience. It is. It's it my, is. my people. Guys, I love my people. You guys are most, mostly Joel guys, right? I love my people. So don't don't come over to my channel and tell everybody what I've been saying, okay? I don't want to see this showing up with tweets with me tagged in it, okay? I just want to be clear there. <laughs> All right, what do you say we bust out another 3D print? Do it. Go find one. God, this one looks amazing, Joel. What did you print look this on? Look at that! I printed that. Wow! In, in look a at that factory. detail. It, it almost looks like it was injected molded. Almost. You would think so. Wow! Look at that. You would be detail. right. Look at that detail. Look at that. Oh wait, this oh, wasn't three D printed. That was. Oh, 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 dude. Oh. Well, it's hard to tell oh. when it's like one thing amongst five thousand other three D. I know. 
This entire room is just full of 3D printed crap. I know. All right, hold on. I know. Uh, there's lots of things on the shelves out here. I just like seeing these these big prints, like because it's just got. Oh, you found it! Good, look at that. It's caffeine. Yeah, it's caffeine. Look, them's molecules, people. And look, at, it's about it's about that thick. G Max. Well, it'd have to be to yeah, print yeah, flat, yeah. that big. I mean, what, if you print it on Ultimaker, it'd have to be like this in two pieces. <laughs> no, I put it so I can put it against have you, the wall. Have you ever wanted to just 3D print, like 3D print something at a weird angle just to see how bad screwed up it would come out? Oh, yeah, I did. Um, like literally just print this like this and just see what happens. It works, though. Does it really? It seriously works. I gotta try that sometime. I haven't. I've never done it intentionally. I think it'd be funny to find the worst possible angle. See, like this, you could do. You could yeah. do something like that. Because the rule is, as long as you don't go over forty-five degree, technically the overhang should work pretty good if the, you got it dialed in right. The the G Max will do sixty-five to seventy degree. That's that's really impressive. <laughs> Have you, have you it's like fan design, man. I told you. Have you uh, have you tried printing a calibration yet? Like the little calibration pieces that do the progressive overhangs? Not yet. I still need to do that. Because I want to see. Because I've done I've done some on the Ultimaker where you definitely it starts getting really messed up on the last two. But yeah. if you look at like most people's printers, they get the last five get messed up. Yeah. I'd like to see a printer that can do that entire thing. Well, my SLA would do it. But oh, your SLA would do it. I want to see it. I want to see on. an FDM actually do it. I'll try it on the. I'll try it on my G Max soon. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Got a lot of, a lot of Ooh. Wait, are you trying to make a BB-8 up in here? Uh, just BB-8's head. Oh. Yeah. I shouldn't have acid, Joel. You should do the whole thing. Look at this I, thing. I, yeah, there we go. Beep, boop, 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 beep. He's a little lighter. <laughs> <laughs> All spoilers. Uh, <laughs> no, I printed this. So I printed this using uh, 3D syst or 3D Fuel's advanced PLA and... I, I, I just wanted a BB-8 head, so so I did. I printed a BB-8 head. The bottom got a little messed up. Bottom got a little messed up. Just a little. Give me the cash, dude. Ray wouldn't. Ray Give wouldn't me shoot cash. me. Ray wouldn't shoot me. I like how Ray was just like a crack shot right out of the box. Right Probably never shot a gun, never held a lightsaber, and she's like all kicking Kylo Ren's ass. Yeah. I can talk about it, right? You can't spoil Star Wars now, dude. Do you it, like the color? I do. Yeah. This do. is the coffee PLA from oh, Proto Pasta. Uh, it only smells when it it's warm. When it burned off, yeah. yeah. That'd be cool if they found a way to do it, like the whole scratch and stuff. Be like, scratch and sniff 3D printing. You're just sitting around there like, I said it first. I'm going to patent that. Scratch and sniff 3D printing. Oh, too late. 3D Systems already has it. The snozzberries smell like snozzberries. <laughs> the blaster smells like suicide. No, I'm just kidding. That'd be bad. That'd be terrible. <laughs> bad. Don't point blasters at your face. Unless you're a trained professional. There we go. There we go. All right. Ooh, what do we have here? Oh, Joel's, Joel's that is doing a Christmas more inappropriate order. things. Dude, what? You can't, that's a stretch. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> this was... This was a Joel I just, event. I just scared off all Joel's subscribers. I am sorry, guys. I you're I'm saucy. Weird. I'm just saucy. Saucy, not weird. Saucy. This was uh, I wanted to test the Simplify 3D vase mode. Oh, the spiral, spiral, spiral print. Yep. Yeah. So there's so there's technically no break in the layers. It's one continuous it's just print. one continuous print, and it works well. It's it's a yeah. little bit a little bit pliable, but well, the nice thing about printing in that mode is that you're guaranteed to get something that's completely watertight. If you print a layer and then print another layer on top, then oh, sometimes right. you'll you get can, an air bubble. And if you get an air bubble, it doesn't work. But if you do it as one continuous loop where it's always laying down on a hot surface, it's coming around, completely watertight. That's awesome. Yeah, so if you print cups and stuff like that, you want to use spiral spiral oh. mode. The only downside to it is um, the spiral mode is you can't do a really thick shell on it. No. You have to do a thin a thin wall well, so the, that you can lay the layer the, down. What's interesting, the spiral mode shell is as thick as your extruder or as your nozzle tip. Right, so if you're a point, what is it, point four millimeter? Point four, point five. This would be a point four, point five. But if you want to do a thick one, you could yeah, do yeah, that'd be fun. I want to try that sometime. You could. I've got an extra J head for the G Max. I might drill it out to one or just, one point two, and that'd be cool. And just do a huge bead. Yeah. Did you ever see uh uh oh God? What's it called? Uh, C, you know, see me CNC. Yeah. The guys that make the Delta. Yeah. Did you see their big their print daddy? It's eighteen foot tall. I've heard of it. I haven't it, seen it. It's basically has a 50 gallon drum on it full of beads and it melts the beads and feeds them into the feeder. So it doesn't use filament because obviously you, you, what kind of spool out. are you going to yeah. put on there? So it just has a big bin that they just pour, pour this, the beads into it and it so melts awesome. them down and feeds them into the print and they print entire like giant vases, like vases that kids stand in because it can technically print. It's eight, the printer's 18 foot tall and I think the workable surface is 12 foot. 
Wow. So you could actually print something that's 12 foot tall, like that's six huge. Big spiral pole and everything. Days. It takes yeah. days. No, no, surprisingly, it's pretty fast because the nozzle on the tip oh, of it is huge, probably 20 millimeters. I mean, it's literally each each layer it's laying down is like an inch across. That's... Like like the vases aren't even two, two info. It's just one spiral just vase one. one. It's just printing like that thick. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, was that had, at uh, Maker Fair? That was a World Maker Fair, okay. yeah, in New York at the New York Hall of Science. That is amazing. If you guys get a chance to go to that event, that is, the, if you were into 3D printing, that is probably the 3D printing event of the world. Yeah. I would say it's even more prevalent more than, than CES. More than CES. Yeah, right. because CES is like companies showing off like their new technology uh, that they're trying to sell. They're trying to bring to market. That's the whole point uh, of CES is you're right. trying to find customers and buyers and things like that. Whereas World Maker Fair is just people just doing stuff to do stuff. I mean, they're literally building like 3D printers, like a giant robotic arm. That's the most I inefficient thing you've seen in your in your life printing, just because they can, because it's cool. It's in this concept. Why not? Yeah. I mean, why not have a robotic arm? Just it's yeah. Think, think of it that way. CES is for professionals trying to sell something. World Maker Fair is just a bunch of nerds trying to one up each other at being unique. And you'd imagine they get pretty pretty crazy. I'm gonna go next year. That's yeah. all there is. To I'll be it. there. I go every single year. Do you really? Yeah, Ultimakers. This this will be my third year going oh, wow. with Ultimaker. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So they, do you have to have a big project? current to for them to to have you go so you can talk about it no they don't really care i mean i did both years but that, right. that wasn't the reason why they flew me out, oh, they flew me oh. out just because they oh. want they want to be there oh because they um, loved you well because they love me and i bring a lot of people to the booth That's, i mean a lot of people okay. when i was there i think when i went to last world maker fair i had a little over 300 people visit me in two two and a half days that's fantastic no it was awesome it was awesome we signed a lot of autographs and it made me feel all big and my ego got big and i was like oh. man i kick ass and then i got home and i was like oh i'm sad youtuber oh, i'm not really oh. famous i'm famous <laughs> oh. <Fomous. laughs> just like i'm not a celebrity i'm a celebrity a celebrity a celebrity. A celebrity that's what i am it's like the only people that know me are people that can't afford cable <laughs> <laughs> all right we gotta get another 3d print awesome. here let me take this other phallic design and put it with the other phallic, phallic design. design you're reaching right. you're reaching ow, 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 ow. Gout toe sucks <sighs> Guys, I literally drove over here and my, and my toes like just destroyed. I can barely freaking walk on it. What is this? Don't tell them. Don't tell them. What is this? What is this, nerds? Say it in the chat. I know what it is. What is it? What well, is it? it's like 30 seconds behind, so we're not going to kind of see No, no, it, you right? just keep saying what is it. What is it? They'll answer eventually. You think so? Yeah, yeah. Don't oh, worry okay. About it. okay. See, now you can tell them what it is. Okay. Go ahead and tell them what it is. What you is got it? the touch. <gasps> you got the power. This is the matrix of leadership. Okay. Wow. Oh, what is the hard? That's a good question. Uh, Levi what? Klein asked, what is the hardest print ever? Barnacles, Joel. I will say mine hands down was the Stormtrooper suit. <laughs> that's, that that's thing was easy. so nightmarishly over the top. You have to realize all of it was created with no time to test to see if it could actually be 3D printed successfully. It was a I'll mad, madhouse. All right, let's see. Let's see what Joel's got. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that's that's pretty, that wins for massively badass. Look at that. There we go. This was my hardest print. This it's like is bigger the, than my head. The Yoda bowl. Well, yeah, ready? Do it fit on my head? Here, put it on. Whoa, dude. <laughs> I have a hat on, I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here, look at this. Uh, I had some problems. I printed three of these. I gave away one. Mm -hmm. uh, I used a 3D pen to fill it in with the filament. Did you steal that idea from me? Maybe. Okay, dick. <laughs> no, just kidding. Oh, <laughs> no, that's all. That's all. Three D prints are good for, guys. It Honestly, really is. that really is, is that is the only thing that the three D prints are good for. And don't buy the expensive three D doodler. Buy the trash little thirty dollar one from Amazon because you're gonna kill it. That's perfect. And you literally use it like a little glue gun to to, to if, if a print fails or it breaks or something busts off it, you just put a little dab of plastic on there, fit it together, and it works fantastic. And it looks a lot better. Than uh, if you use super glue, mm -hmm. because if you wet sand it down, you can't even tell that there's yeah. a line there. Not so it, it, it's flawless. Whereas even if you use glue when you sand it, you will always see a line there because the glue never flattens oh, out perfectly. Doesn't flatten out perfect. Yeah, so you Makes always sense. have a line. And if you if you're gonna paint the piece, it doesn't really matter because the you can get the glue to be flush with the surface if you prime it and paint it. But if you if it's a oh. piece you don't well, want to paint, yeah. So it just depends. But to be honest, most of the stuff that I want to keep like as a showpiece, I paint it. Oh, you do? Yeah, because the nice thing about painting it is, uh, depending on the level of detail of the part, is you can lay down a self-leveling primer, and okay. the self-leveling primer will actually virtually make all the little lines, little layer lines disappear. 
You do lose a tiny bit of the detail, but depending on what, what you're printing. If it's something that's like really organic, okay. you're probably not going to notice as much. If it's something like on this, you're not going to notice too much because it's very, very sharp lines, very big gaps. Right. But if it's something that has a bunch of really tiny like hair like this right here, yeah. you wouldn't want to use self-leveling primer on oh, something. It would, has, it would fill in the yeah, holes. Yeah, because it would fill in the little holes and it would cause problems. So you have to be careful with what you're doing. But I've seen the self-leveling primer like completely just make the lines disappear. And there's also a product on the market. I can't remember the name of it. I haven't used it yet, but uh, my XTC friend... 3D? Is it, yeah, it's the stuff you spray on or whatever, and it, and it levels the, it, it fills in all the gaps. But I think so. It's, it's not a spray; it's a, it's a paint on. So I don't know about yeah, the yeah, spray no, stuff. no, it's a paint on. Oh, you're okay. right, you're right. No, it, it is. You brush it on, and what it's supposed to do is it fills in the gaps and the layers, but leaves the layers still semi-exposed, so it's not adding bulk to your piece. Right. It you, almost goes a on like a like thing. a water. It's almost like a you brush it on almost like a water, but then it dries to like a hard really? acrylic. Because I've always wanted to try it. Yeah, because who is it that used it? Oh, Richard Shraws, Darth Beavis. Yeah. Do you know who he is? Yeah. Okay, so Darth Beavis printed this uh, uh, this female zombie character that was on the front of one of his famed PC builds. And uh, when he printed it, it had a lot of layer striations on it sure. and stuff. And I think he just painted that stuff on there and it smoothed it out. And if you saw it in person, you'd swear... That it was an injected molded part. You really? cannot tell it's 3D printed. Oh, I got to get my hand on some of that. No, stuff. no, it's it's absolutely flawless. But the other thing too is, as long as you guys have time, wet sanding with PLA works amazing. It sucks with ABS. ABS will actually start to melt, and it'll start to uh, string. You'll start getting like little stringy pieces. Oh. But if you wet the sandpaper with PLA, it almost sands just like wood. That's so. You can literally like sand a divot into the thing. But you have to use you have to wet sand it because I tried dry sanding, and what it'll do is it'll just start melting. Yeah. And you'll and you'll literally just start getting these glossy spots where where it's melted, it's melted, yep. and it's pitted, and it's not flat anymore. So just wet sand it and take your time. And you can start with like a two hundred grit, very very light pressure, and work all the way up to like a two thousand grit, really oh, hard. You can pressure. actually like a, a, a sanding, yeah, like session. Yeah, literally take like if it's really bad, take like a two hundred grit wet, knock it down so that you get the lines. You know, and okay. it'll look really rough. It'll almost look furry. A little bit. Oh, okay. And then take okay. it up to like 800. And then if you want to get really crazy, keep doing that until you get to like 2000 and it'll actually shine. It'll look like an injected molded plastic where you wow. you, can, you, can, you can't quite see yourself in it, but you'll see the color That's change. Really, that's amazing. No, no, it's awesome. My Pokeball I did, it was really easy because it was just hemispheres. So I literally just held it in my hand and went like this and just ground it around on the sandpaper. And I did that wow. for about 15 minutes. And when I pulled that, I was like... I was like, oh man, this is really glossy. I was like, oh, it's probably because it's wet. And I dried it off and no, it still looked wet even when okay, I dried I gotta it. I'm going to try that. Yeah. That's like if you, did, if you did it like on this, that would be the easiest piece to do it with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You I'm might have to like take this. a pick and like clean, just clean out whatever sure. gets into the little holes. But um, I bet you that if you just sanded that right there, that would be perfectly like glass if you started with 200 and worked your way up. Wow. I'll give it a try. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And just so you guys know, Buddha, Buddha Jerry here. We need to call him like uh, Buddha Gasm. Budicles. Budicles. I like it. Budicles here. Budicles. Budicles here is getting painted gold. The video I'm going to do with this, um, actually, I'll probably do a video this week just talking about the build, and then I'm going to tell them to come over to your okay. video to watch the time lapse. Sure. Um, so that you can steal all my subscribers and make me cry into my cereal. Uh, and that's fine. You know, that's what YouTube's all about is, you know, people steal your subscribers, and then you uh, get addicted to crack. And, and YouTube leads to crack. YouTube does lead to crack. I've I'm, I've already got this all planned out in my head how it's going to go down. I even got the bridge picked out. No, I'm just kidding. This guy, this guy is getting painted gold, and we're even going to try to put gold leaf on him. Gold Kev leaf. Kevlar condom, aka Adam, friend yeah. of mine, does media production stuff. He wants to help me paint this gold and put gold leaf on it, so it is the gaudiest thing you've ever seen in your entire life, and I can't wait to do it. It's going to be awesome. And then maybe we'll even like clear coat it once we get the thing on there, so we can put I, it outside, put a light. You're going to have to clear coat that. Yeah, and it's just going to look like this deep gold and it's gonna be i want it to look like gold. it belongs on the front of a rolls royce in abu dhabi i mean i'm like that's what i'm going for and then i might even put a big chain on it and just wear it around my neck to like to like emerald city comic con there you go be like i'm buddha please that's a good costume idea that's a that great good. great costume or, idea. or if we could print one where it was like give it out i can actually wear it like as a helmet <sighs> yeah get some velcro straps. some velcro oh, straps yeah man. a big gold buddha and be like a buddha 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 it'd be awesome i like it that's a good idea I can walk around with all these guns. Sure. Hey, Joel, how about we do this? How about I just, I'll just give you all my 3D printers, and then you just do all the 3D printing, and I'll just make all the videos and put them on my channel. It sounds like a match made in heaven. There we go. That's that's, that's how you do so it. That's so easy. That's how you do it, because because you can't get big on YouTube doing it yourself. You have to you have to find people that will just do, do things. I for think you. it's called farming it out, right? I thought it was called slavery, but I mean, you know, well, whatever term is more relevant right now. Why is that got a hole on the side of it? What is that? Oh, this is so you can. Is that open? 
Yeah. So you can add lights oh, and then make it glow. Oh, dude. Somebody really thought that out. Yeah. Here, show that to the camera. Oh, okay. They, 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 they like seeing pieces that come yeah. out and go back in. Look, that's they actually designed a slider piece that goes in there so you can actually fit yeah. bulbs in there. See if I can get it to so the... tell me this: Have you printed any mechanical parts yet, like the transmissions or the scissor lift or anything like that? I did print the scissor lift. The scissor lift is amazing. That's that's fun. It's... Where is your scissor lift? Um, kids got it, didn't they? I may have overloaded it. It's it's pretty easy to do. It's... Did you see Did you see the one that I printed where I put a I put like a twelve pound speaker yeah. on it and it didn't break? That's impressive. I printed it with a hundred percent infill. So oh, you did? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh. No, no. The first I printed that thing uh, three times. And the first two times I printed it, I just used the 15% infill that they said to use on the site. Right. And every single time when I was twisting the knob it'd to break, break, it, right off, break the knob it? off. So no. I said, screw it. I just got mad. And I said, I'm going to print it at 200%. I think it was two, 200 or 250. I can't remember. So so double the size and 100% infill. How much and filament did that use? It used about half. I think it was about a, maybe a little under half a roll. That's not bad. It wasn't too bad. That's not because, bad. Because it's a pretty airy part. I mean, but uh, but no, when I, it took... 18, I want to say it took 18 hours to print wow. at 80 millimeters a second because it's like printed, you know, in the long. Yeah. Long. And when I was done, I literally just grabbed the knob and just wrenched on it. It just goes, just pop free. We well, could because it was yeah. solid. Because it was completely solid. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you could not break that thing. Even when I put the speaker on it, because that was a studio monitor. That wasn't even a conventional speaker. I mean, it's a 100 watt power handling studio oh, monitor. Oh, that was so it's a, got a that's, giant It's magnet. got some weight to it. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I put it on there, the thing was like, I had to like get it on there just perfectly so it balanced without just falling on its face. But it held it, and then I put my Dyson vacuum cleaner on it, too, and it held that. So Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so you could use that for, like, an RC car or something. That'd be pretty cool. Why not? We should probably do a check. How many people are still watching? You guys yeah. still out there? Let's find out. There in TV We're going to find out. So we have 152 people now. That's not bad. What's up, guys? So if you guys would just take a moment right now to please go out to your Twitters, Instagrams, Reddits, 4chan, <laughs> Reddits. and Pornhub, and post this Reddits. URL. <laughs> no, no, Red no, Reddit isn't the bad one. 4chan, 4chan is, is terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 4chan is if 4chan. If you post to Reddit, people just come and mock you. If you post to 4chan, then you just get DDoSed all night. That's pretty much how it works. But we're not at my house, so it's no, cool. no, no. I, I don't mind. We'll be good. That's another thing. I'll, I'll, no, I'll, I'll tell you about the company that I use for DDoS protection. I'm basically DDoS proof now. Really? I, I get DDoSed every single day. Every day, 24 hours a day, I'm being DDoSed, and I don't notice. Unfortunately, Amazon does, but I don't. I don't notice. Really? Yeah, because I have a company called Mushroom Networks. What they do is they take all three of my internet connections, uh, do something called channel bonding, mm -hmm. connect them together, and then connect them into the Amazon Enterprise. So my IP address is actually in the, I think it's the Oregon now, they moved it, the Oregon uh, enter data center down there. So basically, any incoming ICMP packets or SIN packets are intercepted by their network and never actually sent to my modems. So, That's fantastic. Yeah, so, so it's it literally, since I've been using their service, I haven't been successfully DDoSed even once. That's great. Yeah. I even had a friend of mine who uh, had control of a botnet that was capable of, I think it was 30 gigabytes a second or something. Yeah. It was like, I'm pretty sure that wasn't legit, but uh, <laughs> no, he hit it with everything he had. And I didn't notice any bandwidth change. I'm just sitting there with speed test going. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah. Wow. Cause I used to care because Skype leaks your IP address and everything like that. But right. it's like, but I don't care now. Like go ahead. That's my, I guess just, yeah. your DDoS proof. Yeah. I mean, all you're going to do is probably piss off Amazon. I mean, that's not good. Jeff yeah. Bezos doesn't like that. No, no, but I don't work for Amazon. So that's okay. Yet. Yeah. Maybe. Actually, that's true. I could work for Amazon. Work for Amazon. They did offer me a job. I said no though, because I want to be, I want to be, be YouTube famous. Uh, they wanted me in a test, test development position. Oh yeah. For oh, their, so doing like what you did for the, Microsoft. for the, well, yeah, but for the web page instead of like standalone software. Uh, I mean, at Microsoft, okay. I did it for the windows project. This would be for not the sales site, but, uh, Amazon has some, other, oh no, sorry. It was the video, the video streaming service, Amazon prime hmm. video streaming. They needed, they needed testers on that project to write automation. Cool. And I was like, I know how to write you automation. Know, you could do As a matter of fact, the automation harness I developed, Drive UI, is still in use today at Microsoft. Is it really? In my absence, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I still get all my friends there like sending me messages because you're not supposed to put your name in a piece of software at Microsoft because technically anything you create is property at Microsoft. Right. But I started there so long ago and knew all the managers, knew the directors and everything. So every piece of software I ever wrote when you started up says, buy created by Jerry Berg and has my email address inside of the corporate company. Oh, that's fantastic. And the version number. So sure. I still get emails all the time with screenshots of like Keep Alive, Set Res, all my applications that I wrote over the last 15 years. Yeah, they're still they're still, they're still in use. use. That's fantastic. Yeah. No, it's awesome. That's awesome. Makes me feel good that they didn't just so throw do, all my stuff away. It's starting to get to that time. Let's let's do one more. Hold on, make it out and mm, mm, mm. Don't judge me. I didn't judge. Nar nar narcissism comes with the territory here. He's judging me right now. Okay. Hard. One more. Right. We're going to do one more. Whoa, did you print this AT-AT? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. 
Maybe. Someday. Kirby made another one. I got to print. You print a lot of guns, Joel. I'm getting a little worried here. Yeah, they're, they're great for giveaways. You print more guns than I do. Oh, yeah. There we go. Another gun, because I know how much you guys love guns. America! America! Uh, that's, that's pose guns, so it'd be like... It'd be like, rebellion! He's such a poser. <laughs> Lulz. He's the internet's boyfriend. Look at that, there it is. That's Pose Blaster. You know what I noticed, though? Is, I think the Stormtrooper helmet is what makes him shoot so shitty. You ever notice that? Like, because uh, Finn took his helmet off, right? Right. And then he was like a freaking crack shot. He, he was like a sniper. Anything, yeah. He yeah. never, like, missed a single shot. I mean, he got his ass beat by, like, some weird baton thing that just came out of nowhere that made no sense, but... But still, he like remember the dude with the battle baton? Oh yeah, yeah. They like, him. He just she... there's a million stormtroopers on the field, and he happens to be the only one that's like, and then like you look over there and there's thunder guts with his giant. Well, well, remember, because uh, he's the one that called uh, Finn traitor. Yeah. So the guy's name they the internet dubbed him Tr Dash Tr. Yep. yep, the traitor. But I just traitor. thought that was funny in the movie where it's like all these stormtroopers just running around shooting. He he has this giant like baton that can like go up against the lightsaber. I was just like, oh my god, please. Who was this written by? <laughs> traitor come on when he swung when that thing swung around yeah i'm just gonna get all beat up now in the chat be like no it's star wars it's, it's so pure i'll admit it was a good movie it was it's a good, it was a good movie. movie i watched it, it three times in wow. two weeks so well mainly because i had to go i like committed to go with a whole bunch of different groups and so <laughs> by the third time i was just like no shoot me please shoot me. I don't. no it was a good it was a good movie but i just thought it was kind of like a new hope 2.0 yeah. yes did, sort did of you kind of feel like that a little, I, it had, I mean it with had elements callbacks. of yeah it, it had callbacks yeah, but it just Come on, you know. Okay, first you got this like lady. Granted, she's lady, but she's on a planet and she's a scrapper. You know, kind of got the whole yeah. kind of Anakinish, Anakinish vibes from the from the previous prequels. You know, he was he oh, worked in the scrap yard. Oh, sure, I, it just felt like everything in the movie was like borrowed from a different one of the Star Wars franchises. It was really really weird. Um, yeah. Well, when they made the prequels, parts of those were built to make it feel like four, five, and six were borrowed from them. Right? It, right? It's but, just in their, their cyclic storytelling. Come right? on. Star Killer Base. By the way, which is what I named my NAS. My NAS is Star Killer Base. Yeah, because I was like, it used to be Deep Space Nine. And I was like, oh, I need to switch this over to Star Wars. Oh, yeah. And it's bigger. So it's, it's bigger. Star, it's 32, Star, terabyte, Star 32 terabytes. 32 terabytes. But I just thought it was ironic that Star Killer Base is just a bigger Death Star with a bigger trench that X-Wings ultimately flew through again. And they had another character that wasn't named Porkins, but he was obviously oh, Porkins. Oh, man. That was... It was... That was... Uh, uh, Greg uh, Grumberg. Right? Yeah, the dude from uh, uh, Hero. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I saw him and I was like, I was just like, woo, Porkins. And then he survived. Remember the original Porkins died. So I was like, yes, they didn't kill Porkins. <laughs> I was pretty excited about that. That was like, that was like, fat lives matter. <laughs> oh, man, that is awesome. <laughs> it totally was. Well, do you guys want to do uh, a Q&A before we wrap up? You guys want to go through that? Yeah, we can do whatever we want, dude. This is your stream. We could seriously just like get naked and run around your room. Does, well, YouTube would require sensor bars. Sensor bars. Sensor bars. Yeah. Small but that's ones. it. It's small, not like, small. Sensor very bars. small sensor small bars. Sensor bars. Well, very small. Well, the chat is it, the chat is uh, so delayed, right? Yeah, yeah. But we can, but not by not not by like a massive amount. We just say, hey, ask us some questions, like I just did, and we'll start rolling in here in a second. Oh, okay. Yeah, ask yeah. us some questions, and let's see what we can do. Somebody said I'm on fire. What? How many Doctor Who related prints have you printed? Not enough. I need to print more. Because I love Doctor Who. And they're bigger on the inside. They are bigger on the inside. Actually, you three have to read the Star Wars ring theory. Yes. Yes, I do. Joel, tell Jerry I exist. Hey, CJ Printing exists. CJ Printing? I know CJ Printing, actually. Really? CJ Printing, I believe, has actually been on my streams before. That's awesome. He. Um, I like this guy. No self-promotion here. Sub to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my style right there. Uh, 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 Delta or Cartesian? Ooh, which I is funny because we both uh, we I, both have Cartesian printers. We both do have, but Cartesian admit it, printers. you want a Delta. I really want a Delta. I do want a Delta. I really want a Delta. And uh, CME CNC was supposed to be building me a custom one that printed thirty six inches tall, but uh, through the holidays we lost touch because things got so busy. Oh, well, so CME CNC, I will be in touch. Reestablish contact. Yeah, because, because I want it. Fantastic. It, yeah, it's a big one because they built they built one for Darth Beavis that I think can do. I like, saw that four one. or five That's foot huge. tall. Oh yeah, I saw it. It's uh, huge. Uh, Pax, he had it there set up in the Cooler Master booth. We oh, did. It was massive, yeah. Oh, well, they awesome. were going to print the entire helmet as a single piece from the Stormtrooper suit, but then we had some problems with cooling. Like like the, the air conditioner coming down from the ceiling yeah. was preventing the hot end from being able to achieve You're the kidding. temperature. Yeah, so we got kind of screwed. Uh, that deal. sucks. But, but yeah, no, uh, uh, as far as the Delta versus Cartesian argument, Deltas are really nice if you need to print very tall things. Deltas excel at printing tall items. That's, they do. I know. And that's because Cartesian's ultimately stability yeah, yeah. becomes a problem, but with the Deltas, it doesn't. 
Uh, let's see. I scrolled back a little bit. What is the best printer? It's the one you own. Let's see. What orientation did you print Poe's gun? It was in four pieces, and they were all printed in the correct orientation. Yep. So piece number one, piece number two, piece, piece number, number three, three, and piece, piece number, number four. four. Uh, GoPro for time lapses. Which one do I use? I use the GoPro Hero 3 Plus. I use a three. Hero 4 Black Edition, but honestly, black? I saw the your... three is fine. For YouTube video, I don't it's think you fantastic. really... Need, you don't need the 4K. You really don't. Is the Flash Forge a better deal than buying two Wanho, I assume, duplicator i3s? No. What the hell's a Wanho? Wanho. Wanho makes the duplicator i3, that thing that's in the office right there. Well, I think it's garbage. You don't want that. It is not garbage. No, no. Do I ever use ABS There's like duct when tape I have to? You don't want that. When I have to. <laughs> Do you three, can I 3D print more Destiny guns? I, hey, uh, I've only printed one thing in ABS ever, and it was the bat knife. Yeah? Um, Because I needed something flexible, so yeah. I was like using it as an actual stabbing implement. And it turned out pretty cool, but I will tell you right now, ABS is a pain in the ass to oh, work with. Oh, I know. And it oh, smells know. like cancer. You it literally feel like you're getting cancer sitting next to the machine. It doesn't you smell just good. Just don't do it. I printed it. all of my uh, cookie cutters before that I sold on Etsy mm -hmm. in ABS because they needed to be flexible and to be able to handle warm to hot water to rinse off. Is ABS considered food grade, though? No, like, none of the plastics that I use are considered food grade. But I thought PLA is a uh, corn starch drive, so it's sure, technically it you could but eat it. it you well, they not. say it's not food grade because it goes through a metal extruder, and that metal could have Oh, that's true. That that's true. Off, it could be so. contaminated. Yeah. But so. we're not, it's not like this is a bowl holding soup. Yep. This is cutting dough, cold that's true. dough. That's so true. I, I use uh, XT. Color 5 XT is what I've used for all my cookie cutters. And it works fine, doesn't and it? And it works really fine. The thing I like about it is uh, it's got... Lower a little bit, slightly lower temperature melting point. You can mm -hmm. do it at two thirty versus two sixty with oh, really? ABS, and it has the same properties as ABS, whereas it's still got some flex to it, unlike oh, PLA, which nice. it just crumbles. You know, well, so. the, those those cookie cutters are color fab PLA, and they have some flex to them. Not as much, but right, right. But you know, you, you know what I mean when I say PLA is rigid, yeah. right? Like oh, you I can know. actually snap a piece off. A ABS, you can do this, ABS, and it just like changes color. <laughs> it's like. Or nylon. Have you ever printed nylon? No. You cannot. Have you? If you print anything in nylon, it will retain that shape for two million years. Oh, you will not be able to break awesome. it. You take it outside and drive it over with your truck and it won't do nothing. Let's see. Hey, Joel, this is Becky the intern. Hi, Becky. What's up, Beck? She's my, she was the intern at, uh, at the Adobe. Oh, was she? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Most disappointing print you've come home to. Probably stuff where the print head is in the air and the and there's nothing on the print bed because I had a... I had a clog. The worst one I uh, ever came home to was... See, the, and then you get these people that say they love ABS, and I'm glad you guys love ABS. Seriously. No, I, I'm not. You guys are misguided and wrong, and you need to just change your damn ways, okay? I want to love ABS, and maybe 2016 is the year that I do love ABS. I think they like sniffing markers, too. I, I think they're... I, I have no opinions on, on your marker sniffing abilities. However, if, if you have tips for printing ABS... Tell me about them. I'm more than happy to learn. I, I would love to. I have a I tip have, for you. I have, Do not print an ABS. I know. I have like 20 rolls of ABS I still need to go through. No, that's through. why people print an ABS because it's cheap. You can get ABS dirt you cheap. You can get you. But I do have to answer the question above though because oh, you were like, that? your worst 3D print does it pales in comparison to mine, like hugely. Oh, I bet. You're like, I came home to the head in the air printing pubic hair. No, it gets worse. I came home to an entire half roll of filament engulfing the entire print head, smoldering with smoke blowing out of both sides of it just at nearly the point of ignition. Because somehow the filament came out and wrapped around and stuck to the head and started accumulating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like and, a... Yeah, and it, it literally looked like there was a blob this big. It was like half a roll of PLA on the head. And when I came into the room, there was like a smoke haze and a thing. And I could smell it. And it was and PLA usually doesn't smell that bad. No. This was like burning carbon smell. And I looked at it, and this whole mass was just dripping like a little bit, and it was smoldering. And I oh, unplugged the printer really quick, good. pulled it apart, took a putty knife, and started digging the blob off the print head. And when I knocked it off the print head that fell on the build platform, you could see it was all burnt and black, where it actually blackened. Did it. you save the print head? Yeah, the, yeah, the print head's still You're on kidding. the machine today. Yeah, because I actually did it before. You don't want to let it cool. Uh, because you're, ne you, you're, uh, you're never going to no, get off never. because it went so far up the print head. But it was still malleable enough that when I got the knife on there, I was able to pry it off and it just fell off as one giant chunk. But That's it was awesome. still messy. Like if you look at I the print head. Because I, I had something similar yeah. on, on the J head and I, it, I couldn't rescue it. So I just took a blowtorch and held it yep. to it. So, so where's I your fire better. extinguisher? Uh, we have a sprinkler system. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Old Joel and his rich people house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we have a fire extinguisher. You can just sit on the couch and laugh. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, but seriously, see, if you're going to run 3D PLA printers. PLA is night, love. PLA is love. It is. PLA is love. MakerBot, yes or no? No. 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 No, no MakerBot. No. No. Uh, let's see. I am. I, I, so you were wrong. <laughs> Die. Die in 3D printing world. <laughs> 
Okay, this I'm gonna I'm gonna call it right here. 2016 is the year that I learned to print ABS well. So it's gonna happen. Yeah, good luck with that. Bro. Uh, it's gonna happen. Good I got luck. a bunch of filament. I got a bunch of people here telling me they can do it. So I'm that's it. 26. I'm gonna. All right, for 2016, I'm gonna learn how to take my ABS roll outside and just light it on fire and see how long it will smolder and burn. And then get a video, it gets like a million hits because time lapse are that. weird. Yeah, time lapse that. Yeah, because yeah. I watched that. Do you know PLA actually is really flammable? Have you ever done, have you ever oh, made yeah. the PLA candle? Yeah. Oh wait, no, I know about it, but I haven't done yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, I literally just printed out these uh, little. They were like little pins for holding things together, yeah. and the pins that failed, I just took outside and lit them with a lighter, and, they and burn? just set them down. They just burn like a candle. Just they burn down like they have a wick in it. It's That's awesome. Awesome. So if you're ever cold and the power is out, oh, you can actually take the PLA right off. You you can take the PLA and actually just light it too, right off the spindle, and really, burn it like a wick. Yeah. Here's a good question: Ultimaker two or G Max one point five XT plus. Okay, there's a few questions that need to be asked, though, because there are some defining factors here. Do you live in a mansion? <laughs> no, the G-Max is ridiculously huge, guys. You need a lot of space, because remember, it's not only a massive build platform, but that platform has to move in either direction quite right. a ways. The build plate moves back and forth on the Y-axis. So, so, so to, if I had to say just looking at it, you probably need about the same surface area on your desk as about six Ultimakers to like fit that entire G-Max. Like, There's not motion. six. I got, hold on, let me double, well, check. Let me double check here. I've never, I've never actually... Uh, it's like two. Four. Let's say four. Four? It's four. So it's, it's it's the build plate is sixteen by sixteen. Because right now, looking at it, it looks like it's with with the controller computer on it. It looks like you could put two ulti makers side by side in front of it, pushed together. Really? And the plate moving back and yeah. forth, you could put two more vines. So I'd say it's surface of about four ulti makers. And you have to remember that the platform does move, so you got to make sure that there's nothing obstructing that. Because that's the problem I had with the Robo too when I used to print on my Robo 3D. Yeah. Is I'd push it back on the table. And I'd start a print, and the thing would just go. Rrr, rrr. It would just hit the wall and just start clunk, 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 clunk. So you have to make That's sure. That's not good. Yeah, it's not good. You have you have to make sure you have a lot of space. But I'll tell you what, the G Max. Uh, what's the what do they cost for the for the G Max? The G Max, I believe the the XT Plus is I believe it's twenty nine ninety five. Twenty nine ninety five for a printer with that build volume that can print in this quality, I mean, is is a pretty badass deal. I don't think it's a bad deal at all. It's not a bad deal. Not How's bad it deal? on noise? Is it pretty quiet? It's, it's the new one is is phenomenally quieter than the last one, and the last one wasn't that loud. Gotcha. Yeah, they've they've. Um, so that's one thing I do it. like about the Ultimaker too is you could literally sleep next to the thing. You could put this it on one your, isn't your sleep thing. next to. Okay. You still, the motors still sing a little bit. Yeah, they did something with the way that they did the mounts on the Ultimaker with the NEMA motors. It absorbs all that annoying high so frequency crazy. stuff. So it's yeah. like it's pretty quiet. I like that high frequency. I like it. I do. I kind of like it. It's, it's like it's fun. like R2D2 getting it on. No, it, <laughs> it's, um, it prints well. It's not too loud. Uh, I love the printer. They're they're both amazing printers. I mean, honestly, after seeing this, I mean, I'm definitely getting the G Max and reviewing it next month because this is, I, this is legitimately a good print. I think size. between Ultimaker and G Max, I think whichever one you own is the best one. That's pretty much our rules. So, and I'm going to own both of them. So they're both going to be the best. I don't I don't think there's a bad decision among yep. that. Not at all. No, nope. I, I want to tell tell Ultimaker I'd, I'd love to try one out. I'll get with Ultimaker. You want to go to World Maker Fair next year? I do. I could probably get them to get both of us over there. All right, cool. Done. Done. Let's do it. Done. Let's do it. I'll take uh, Joel with me. Yeah, there we Don't go. Dare upstage me, though, bitch. You hear me? Yeah, see, Chuck. <laughs> Chuck's, Chuck's like, saying G Max. G Max. No, the G, the G Max looks legitimately good. Now, have you printed anything on the G Max at 0 .06 millimeter layer height? Uh, let's see. My uh, my layer heights. I've gone down to point one. Five on mine or point one two. Okay, I haven't I haven't gone. I mean, obviously, you don't want to print anything giant at zero point one or lower because no, 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 no. it would take, take to print this it, would yeah, take you don't like that, two yeah. three days. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't done any. Uh, I actually here's what's interesting on the G Max right now. It's got a zero point five meter nozzle, and I print the first layer at point five. Really? Yeah. It's it gets wicked adhesion to the bed, and it's a solid surface for it to build from. First layer, 0.5. You know what? Just looking at it, how even the layers are on this, though, honestly, I think it can do it no problem. If it can do 0.2 that smooth, I'm sure it can do something very like, Probably. much smaller. Yeah. You should do it, though, just for just for giggles. Just do a 0.6 layer? Get something really small and do like a 0.6 layer and try to, try to print this guy like in this size. Okay, just see how it turns out. <laughs> yeah. Just, it's just shoveling. It'll literally, yeah, and it'll literally have to stop for like 30 seconds just to let the layer like adhere to go again. Because that's what happens when you print really small stuff. It's like, me, 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 me. Like when you print like a tiny little shaft on oh, something. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it, yeah, it's like, me, 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 And then it stops for like 20 seconds. And it's like, me, 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 me. stops for 20 seconds. got to let it cool well, down. That's, that's actually... Uh, 
the the slicer, I think, mm -hmm. computing that, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, and I use Kura. So and you use Simplify 3D. I use Simplify 3D. I need to get into Simplify 3D because Joel gets amazing quality prints, and I think it's because he's using Simplify 3D. You should um uh, Angus, he runs Maker's Muse yep. on, on YouTube. Okay. He just did a slicer um, a slicer comparison between Kura, um the the new a new one that just came out and Simplify 3D and a fourth one. And he did some crazy tests with uh, yeah. some objects he designed. There's some that are crap, though. Like, what is it, Repetier? The oh, Repetier host, yeah. That thing sucks. Oh, my God. It's, but it's... Some people like it, though, for some reason, but I have never gotten a good print ever out of that slicer. Ever. Simplify 3D is for people yeah. who like C++. Repetier host is for people who program in assembly. <laughs> That's true. And Kura is for people that program in, uh, in Visual Basic. Visual Basic. <laughs> <laughs> Lego Mindstorm. That's that, that's oh, that's funny. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, it's getting time, dude. I got kids got school in the morning. Let's let's I hear call you. it. Let's do it. Let's wrap right. it up. All right, hey guys. Uh, hey guys uh, big thanks to Jerry for coming by. He had to pick up his model, and it was yeah. it was kind of fun to have a have a guest on my on my my live show here. Um, Heck yeah, buddy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the 3D prints that we showcased. I I hope you enjoyed any of the banter we had. I hope I hope any information we gave you was was a was informative and i hope it helps in your decisions in life um yeah and i hope i only slightly offended you guys because that's where you want to be out on the internet just, just slightly slightly, just slightly offensive. offensive not over just just slightly. enough where you can giggle about it slightly because doors, right? because live streams are so much funner when you try to make the other person a little bit uncomfortable that's true that's, it is that's it's true. Just, it just, we'll, you try, know, we'll try harder next we'll time. try harder next yeah, time, try next time. Dude, all right guys it's been fun. uh it's been fun hey we gotta end it with a with a high five all right ready all right ready mm. okay